These are the seven fastest ways that you can win in chess. Five moves is the wayward queen attack. Starting with e4, e5, and then we get queen to h5, which will be using this queen to checkmate him. The truly fastest way to win, king to e7, which just loses the game already on move three because queen to e5 is checkmate. There is another line to this, and so it's e5, queen to h5. Then if they go knight to c6 instead, then we'll go bishop to c6. E4. And so we'll be pairing up on this pawn over here, which will result into checkmate. And so if they do something stupid like this move or this move, then this is checkmate. So that's how you pair the queen and the bishop in the wayward queen attack. Let's move up a nut. So let's go here in the English opening. We go first with pawn to c4. They go pawn to e5. Then we go knight to c3. They go knight to c6. All knights develop all pawns taking some squares. All normal, right? So we got knight to f3, pawn to g6. We will go pawn to d4. If these lines that they fall for are correct, then you're literally on the trap. They will take because they know that they will get a one pawn after that sequence. But they do not realize that when we go knight to d5 and if they go knight to e7, it's already checkmate on the spot. It's suffocated checkmate. You cannot go here, 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 here because of the knight checking you and plus you cannot cannibalize your own pieces. And that is second fastest way to win a chess game in six moves in the English opening. But there is another line here, which we can still checkmate with it. So we got bishop to g7, which develops a bishop, which is more reasonable than this, which means we get more chances of getting more checkmates to him. And so we go bishop to g5 after he goes bishop to g7, knight goes e7 on his side of the board. We go and take the pawn on d4 and if his bishop takes the knight on d4, that is a huge no-no because when they go and take our knight, when the bishop goes to d4, we sacrifice our queen on d4. Because why? Why are we sacrificing the queen on d4? Well, you'll see. He will take the queen with a knight, a free queen. We will go knight to f6, which he will be forced to go king to f8. And that's checkmate with bishop to h6. That is the second fastest way you can win with checkmate. So folks, in the next opening, this is the third fastest way to win it. So this opening is starting with the position of Scandinavian. Pawn to e4, pawn to d5, challenging the pawn on e4. If he takes, we go knight to f6, trying to attack that pawn desperately. If they go pawn to c4, all is last words, then we go pawn to e6, they take our pawn, we go take their pawn, and we're challenging this pawn, and so... They go pawn to d4. This main goal of the opening is to swarm the enemy. Why do we call it a swarm? Because the next piece literally comes in here and checks the king. And so if they cover it with a knight on c3, we'll go knight to e4, challenging that knight. We go and take the free pawn because he's blocking the queen from defending this pawn, which makes this pawn a free pawn. And so we take the pawn. And now if it goes knight to f3, it's checkmate. Because when we go queen to f2, we cannot take the queen because he will be taken with a knight. Cannot go here because of the queen. Cannot cannibalize his pieces also. It is checkmate on move 8 on this opening. And now moving on to the next opening, which is the fourth fastest way to checkmate someone in chess, is starting with the England gun. They go pawn to d4, we go pawn to e5. If they take the pawn, it's a huge mistake. This is the England gambit. This is why it's called a gambit, because you sacrifice a pawn for checkmate later on. So folks, we have knight to c6 after they take our pawn and challenging that pawn. So they must defend that pawn in order to protect that pawn. We go queen to e7, trying to challenge more of that pawn. When they will defend it again, there is something wrong. Because now, if we go queen to b4, that's a check, plus a fork to the pawn and to a bishop. So to prevent that from happening, they go bishop to d2 attacking the queen. Just knight tried to take the bishop, but just the pawn only. We take the pawn and we attack the rook. They go bishop to c3. They're happy because they're protecting the rook, right? And they're safe because he cannot take the bishop because of the knight protecting the bishop on c3. Are they protected? No, they're not. Because when we go bishop to b4, when we go bishop to b4, if you take the queen, we win by taking the king. If they go and take their bishop, and we could take the bishop or the rook. If they go queen here instead, it's all dead for him. Because if we take the bishop, they will take our bishop. Then it's checkmate. He unguards the square that he's protecting from checkmate of us. That is how you checkmate in seven moves with the England gambit. Win a chess game 
with these other openings. So, pawn to d4 is start, pawn to d5 is next. If they go pawn to d4, which is the queen's gambit, we go to the Albin counter gambit, gambit, and now if they take our pawn, we will go pawn to d4, they go pawn to e3, attacking a pawn. They see that they can just attack our pawn in the center as well. That That is just a big mistake because we can just go bishop to b4 and swarm him with our bishop on b4. Check him, and also he goes bishop to d2, developing a bishop while also blocking the king's check. We go and take the pawn on e3. They will go take our bishop. That's actually a bad move. What? You're gonna be checked. And if you take the pawn, which we use to check in, we will take the queen. And that's a free queen vote. And that's how you win the game. But that's not all. If they don't take the pawn, then they go king to e2. And we go and try to develop that pawn into a knight. What? Because it's checked. But if we try to develop it into a queen, then they will just go here and take the queen and then it's check and if we take the queen back, they will just take the queen back. Instead of developing into a queen, we need to develop a knight instead, which leads into check. And if they take the knight, which which we use to check him, we will x-ray the king with bishop to g4. If we're here, if he moves his king, we will take his queen. And if he goes here, we go and take the queen. You cannot even take our queen because it's being protected by the bishop itself. We, which we used a while ago. If we go here already, it's gonna be blocked by the knight. So we needed to do this. And the next opening, it starts with pawn to e4, pawn to e5, knight to f3, knight to c6 game. So we go bishop to c4, they go knight to f6, and it's the liver, fried liver attack. And so when it's the fried liver attack, we go knight to g5. And if they go d5, then it's all lost for them. If we take it with a pawn, they will take back with a knight. Then we will take back with a knight. Because we'll take this pawn with a knight. Why are we sacrificing our knight on f7? Because when he takes, we go queen to f3. And there's a chance that he could go wrong here and be checkmated. The wrong move is here. If they go here, that's checkmate. Because when they take, we take back, they will block, and that's checkmate. You cannot cover any piece from this queen that attacks the king for the seven opening. This wins in 10 moves. We go pawn to e4, they go pawn to e5, and then knight to f3, and then knight to c6, and then we go pawn to c3. We got two knights developed upon taking some more spaces again, and we got knight to f6. This is where this, is where this opening falls in place. Where this pawn goes to d4, they will go take our free pawn on e4, and that's a huge no-no. We attacking their knight, and if they go knight to a5, we go attack his knight, and so his knight is trapped. But they do not want that, so they should go here. And so we go and take the pawn, and after that, if they go d6, attacking our knight, then we go bishop to b5, the killer move over here. If they take with the bishop, we go here and take with their bishop, and also if they take our bishop, then we'll take his queen. Because there is no way that you can avoid checkmate without taking the bishop with the queen, and we will take that queen, which would lead to a trade that he would very lose in. But, there's another variation, which is a much much deadlier situation. If they go pawn to g6, then we go and take his pawn. They go they go take our pawn, then we go to their pawn with a knight. If they take our knight, then that's a triple fork. That's a very very good fork over there. We can take the knight or the rook over here, folks. They go with their pawn to c6 and then take the knight. It's much deadlier. Because now we go here, check, and then we're gonna go here and take the rook with the promotion. He's gonna try to block with the bishop. If they block with the bishop, we must go here and take the bishop, and then they will take the bishop. And now all is lost because we can take the rook plus promote with a queen. And that is very insane because now we have a queen and his king be exposed. All the openings out here that can win the fastest. Those are all the openings. See you guys again in the next video which is tomorrow. Please subscribe and like if you learned something today. And which helped me to motivate me to make more videos like this. Uh, peace out.